Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here, and in this video I'm gonna show you this. That's my ESR meter, which I made quite a while ago, and uh, which I successfully fried not so long ago. Now, here as you can see, it's very simple. I took an old, not an old, I took an old style analog multimeter, it's a cheap stuff bought it in uh, for like two bucks or something gutted it out essentially all I used from it is the case and the movement and uh, the jacks with uh, these filthy probes which really feel like Grrr! I should change them but anyway maybe I will now that I fried it so here you can see a switch and normally if you short the leads you will see the full deflection that's the way you zero it that's by the way you can see those little holes there that's a zeroing hole there is a little trim part that you adjust to get a, to put uh, the needle right on a zero with the meter in this position and it's an analog meter it's an oh, excuse me it's an actual physical movement there so actually the placement of a meter is pretty crucial if you will zero it in this position laying down it will misbehave in this position so I pretty much always use it in horizontal position because it's the most stable way but anyway now click a switch and you can see it does nothing absolutely the needle should deflect this way so let's take it apart and I'll show you what I fried and how do I, and how I fried it, you may ask. Well, I was looking at the bad four bad capacitors in an LCD monitor and being the idiot I am I relied on the fact I assumed that the bulk capacitor in a switch mode power supply in that monitor is discharged by now more by then actually and it wasn't so eventually the moment I connected the second probe to the capacitor I heard something pop inside like now I understood oh boy now that capacitor was charged that's the scene moral of the story do not assume in electronics, always measure. You can see the insides now, it's fairly straightforward. Nano battery, little regulator board, 78L05, 100 million 5 volt regulator, a little board here with a chippy, which is TL072. Perhaps you may see it, I'm not sure. Yes, you can see it loud, nice, TLO72. This used to be a zero in trim part, but hey, well, excellent, Johnny. Uh, you put it here and how will you zero it in with the case intact? So I essentially went and repositioned that zero and port right here, that's what you see. Okay, so the schematic. The schematic is very very simple, but I don't, I don't think I have it in paper form. So I, you will see the schematic right now. So yeah, as you saw, schematic is fairly simple, and if you think for some time. If you are already familiar with electronics, you might see a couple of components which will be subjected to frying if you connect a charge capacitor to the thing. And those, and if you didn't understood already, those components are 10 ohm resistors connected on, on the secondary of the transformer. The transformer, by the way, does not provide any isolation, it just provides impedance matching because you need to push a fair bit of current 
into that capacitor in order for the movement to register the voltage across it. Anyway, enough of a babble. So that's uh, those two resistors I was talking about. You can see. And if I'm gonna measure them with a uh, multimeter, you will see that one of them is open. Hopefully you'll be able to see a meter. I'm not, sh not sure about that. Now you can. Good. It's showing one at the moment, which means overload. And the resistance is much larger than it has to be. So that's one of them. And it's the open one. I'm gonna probe the other one. You'll see two ohms. Yeah, that's in circuit, so yeah. Do not rely on this reading entirely because you have other resistances in the circuit. So I'm gonna go and replace those two and in the next part which you will see shortly you will see this scene operating like it should. Alright guys, so it actually took me a little bit more time than I thought it would. It will because uh, I had to change the chip because the chip, uh, chip itself got damaged in the process. It's a TL072 as you see and uh, it hasn't JFET on inputs and they are pretty darn sensitive so I think whenever that spike of current mm, blue is one of the resistors that actually those resistors terminated the output of the transformer and that essentially allowed the voltage to be uh, on the low on the secondary low voltage secondary of the transformer and that spike induced much higher voltage on the primary which is made of much finer wire which is connected directly to the input of the op amp but I changed the op amp and now it works just fine. So let's close it back together. And you will see for yourself. Let me screw it back in. It's a bit, a bit awkward to do, to do this left handed. I'm not a lefty. So Okay, let's connect it up. It doesn't have polarity, so it doesn't matter which lead goes where. But now if you go and short the leads together, so you could actually see it, what I'm doing here, you will see a full deflection. You do have to make a nice contact. If it's, if it's bad, the thing will wiggle back and forth. So you can see I can do that, and then I can use that little thing of a jig, the little trim part to null it out. That's actually very hard to do. Anyway, you get the idea. Short the leads together like this and make it so it is right on zero in a walking position, which is in my case laying flat on the table. So that's that. A little video from me to show that I'm not dead yet. And yeah, if you're interested, leave a comment, rate this video so I will actually understand that people like this kind of content or not. Thanks for watching, see ya.